All right, we're back with Naked or No. I recorded Vampire Counts, uh, the Wood Elves, and Warriors of Chaos before, but my computer's being dumb and recorded with the wrong mic, so we're doing it again. Anyway, yada yada. Naked or No, this is where I go through every uh, Lord and Hero for roster and suggest what items or abilities you might want to take. If you disagree with them, that's my opinion, so good for you, buddy. And since we're doing Vampire Counts, Spooky Hood. Spooky hood. Eh. All right, we got the spooky hood. Let's do this. Master Necromancer. Probably don't take him. Just take Helm and Gorst. Hey, pup. Uh, just take Helm and Gorst instead, because Helm and Gorst has a Mortis engine, and Master Necromancer sucks. But if you insist upon taking him, probably want his corpse cart with the unholy lodestone for the aoe healing on your army for freezies hello hazel love you you're very nice oh you're very nice uh bard of nightmare probably not worth it uh hell steed in the air probably not worth it either because necromancer is such a shit combat lord that you don't get much out of him being there hello yes you're very nice you're very nice yes okay okay hello okay uh, yep okay oh boy that's a lot um, abilities. Probably want this one, Master of the Dead. Ah! It's more AoE healing. It's lovely. It's good. I'm getting pushed off screen <laughs> by the dog. <laughs> ah, I love this dog. I'm not cutting this shit. Fuck you. Um, Curse of Undeath. You only want it if you have a bunch of Grave Guard or Blood Knights or something that you want to heal passively by casting any spells on anything else. Magical Animus, I wouldn't take it. Uh, leadership on Undead Units, isn't that important? Also on the Vampire Count specifically. Um, crumbling isn't that big of a deal because you have so much AoE healing. Yes, hello. Um, spells, do whatever you want. It's fine. Uh, spells are up to you. It depends on matchups. It's not even worth going through. Wand of Jet, increased power reserves, plus 30... Second ability recharge, definitely take that, that's great. And then scroll of power, only take it if you have some special double cheese in mind. Um, the game was loud, that was bothering me. All right, back at it. Helmand Gorst, the master necromancer, but good. Always take on his brother's gorps cart. Brother's Gorst corpse cart. He has a mortis engine effect. Uh, lots of good healing abilities, yada yada, he's great. He does have the Unholy Lodestone, so he has AoE healing. Also take Master of the Dead. Uh, same thing we said for the Master Necromancer on that thing. And Liber Noctis, probably take it, unless you have a matchup where Gorse is going to get sniped in case. In that case, causing damage to self. Yeah. Causing damage to self isn't worth it. Of course, it's good. Kemler is also good for different reasons. You almost always want him on horse. Um, take Master of the Dead. Take Curse of Death if you're going to cast a lot of spells and you have units you care about. I would take a Death Resurgent for the melee defense, because as we'll talk about in a little bit, Krell is quite, uh, not Krell, uh, Kemler's quite a tanky boy. And the Lord of Undeath summons Krell, do this. He's like a white king, but on steroids, and he lasts a really, really long time. Uh, summon him on top of something you want to kill, and he will get it done slowly. Chaos Tomblade is excellent. If he's in melee with random chef, uh, gives hit everyone around him melee attack, gives everyone around him even more hit points. Per second, and that's really good. So that's good. And the Cloaks of Mist and Shadows is excellent. It gives him magic damage, 60% physical resist, and strider, meaning he's unaffected by hindering terrain. So, if you're taking the Cloaks of Mist and Shadows, you're taking this to give him lots of regen, and you're taking this to give him some melee defense. If you throw him in some chaff, he will almost take no damage as long as you're using your abilities correctly, and he can give his army the Chaos Tomb Blade buff, which is really nice. So, Kemler's quite good. Striga Ghoul King, probably won't take the Striga Vampire Lord, but just in case you're a little strapped for cash. Uh, Bloodlust is good. He does have good armor piercing values. Um, I should say, probably take him on his Terror Geist. If he's on foot, he can't find and snipe what you need him to snipe, and he is. The Striga Ghoul King and Striga Vampire Lord are both really good sniper characters, so flying is good. Curse of Undeath, take it if you want. If you want to heal up your whole army. The Hunger I wouldn't take because he's going to be in melee. It only acts when he's in melee. When he's on his Terror Geist, he kind of wants to dive in and out, in and out. Uh, doesn't want to stay in melee for too long, so you won't get that much use out of the Hunger. And it has 100 gold. Take whatever spells you want, but no, he has a mixed lore. 
Um, he doesn't have a zombie summon, he has a Crypt Ghoul summon, so he might pair well with a Necromancer with just a zombie summon. Opal Amulet's you know, really good. Potion of Strength. Honestly, I do think that this can be good. Um, if you're trying to like one-shot the Fey Enchantress or someone important and just make that one dive you get really count. Can be really good. Situationally. A Vampire Lord. You almost never see him. What spells does he have? Basic Lore of Undeath. So... Probably won't see him. Uh, he's just Manfred, but worse. But if you really want to take him for some reason, probably take him on a Zombie Dragon um, for the Breath Attacks and the Armor Piercing and a big Dragon. Because the Undead actually do well with Dragons. Probably not the Hunger. Doesn't want to stay in combat for too long. Undeath Resurgent is eh, fine. Um, I would probably take it. And Charm Shield is super good. 20% damage resistance. Missile Parry sucks ass because he doesn't have a shield. Um, on his dragon. But regardless, 20% damage resistance for 48 gold is good. And Sword of Antiheroes. Up to you. Probably wouldn't take it. But I wouldn't take this Lord, so... Yes. Necrarch. He has a mixed lore. Three different lores. And a whole bunch of lore passives. So he's a mana battery. Probably want the Hellsteed or the Zombie Dragon for angles of attack. Um, if you're taking him, you probably want these Augments of the Winds because you're taking him as a mana battery, so take the mana battery spells. Definitely Arcane Conduit. Again, cut the hunger. Um, Dark Protection is also very good. Probably if you're taking him. I know I just said I wouldn't weigh in on spells. Probably take these three. Um, this is the best spells he has. The Miscast Chance is not... A big deal and this is a one-time use so sure it's cheap but it's still not even worth being cheap in my opinion and scroll leeching sucks von karstein lord you take him specifically because of storm of the night it's if you're expecting an air battle and you really need to win it uh, storm of the night is just tempest with a different unit card um, so it's a bound tempest it's good seeing as how you need him you don't need him but seeing as how you're taking him to win the air fight probably take him on his health seat or a zombie dragon because he's you know why win the air fight if you're not out there uh, cut the hunger yet again, because if he gets stuck in combat, you have bigger problems. Um, he also has a mixed lore. Never summon the Vargulf. It sucks. Vargulfs' as a unit are not good because of their burst potential. They are good because they last forever. And a summon, by nature, does not last forever. Uh, Sword of Antiheroes. Take it if you really need it for some reason. I wouldn't, because Von Karstein is kind of a meh combatant. Isabella Von Karstein. Not in the best place right now, but probably want to earn either her Bartered Nightmare or her Hellsteed, depending on whether you want aerial control or not. Red Fury's good. The Vigor's kind of nice, so just take it. I mean, eh, okay, it's 102 gold. I could see you cutting it, so this one's situational. I would cut the Hunger. You don't really want her stuck in combat. Master Beguile one's great. Take it. Uh, her spells are just the Master Necromancy ones. And if you're taking Isabella and you're not taking a Blood Chalice, why did you take her at all? It's just a better... Regrowth type ability that only works on Lords of Heroes for your team. So you don't have to waste invocations and help on, on yourself or your buddies. But uh, Isabel's not amazing because usually vampire units are going to heal cap anyway, so it's like meh. But she's nice. She's not a bad lord. She's just not ideal. Well, I mean, Vampire Lord. Probably want her on her dragon or on Hellsteed. She's pretty good at melee combat, as we'll get to in a second. Um, so we're flying mounts, lighter pick some engagements that are good. But Nightmare's not bad. Probably don't want the hunger, but you do want lightning reflex. Yeah, lightning reflexes. More speed to catch whatever you're trying to catch. 20% damage, this is good. Seduction is great. Minus 25% speed to help you keep whatever you caught next to you. And minus 24 melee attacks, so they can't fight back. So she's very good at finding enemy lords in the air or something and sniping them out. Pendulum's a good spell, and Feebling Foe's a good spell. So she has a lot of good uh, spells in her unique lore that you might notice help her duel zombies to pin in things on the ground. Enfeebling foe to nerf her foes. Aqua Spine Razor to buff herself. Like She's surprisingly a really good duelist type lord. Um, this is really good. Take this. 40% magic resistance stops you from getting missile sniped. And Chronic Man sucks on an undead roster, so don't take that. The Red Duke, another good duelist sniper lord. Probably also want him on his health steed or on his zombie dragon. Maybe on his barter nightmare if you're running some weird blood knight themed build. Um, but competitively probably want him on either of his flying mounts. Again, cut the hunger. Foe Seeker's good to help him catch his targets. 
and keep his vigor up. Elsif is good, minus 40 melee defense, minus 20 physical resist, almost 50% slow. Um, very good for catching a lord you want to fight and fighting him. Other than that, that sucks, and it's not ideal. But Blood Dragon Lord, super good AoE debuff lord. Almost always want him on a zombie dragon. Cuz. Ah, there it is. So, low armor piercing, low armor piercing, low armor piercing. You want him on his dragon because one of his best powers, heart piercing, gives him plus 50% armor piercing weapon damage. Which on his dragon is a lot of damage, and on his other mounts is not. 40% charge bonus, and sunders enemy armor. So that's really good. Honor or death, if he's ever in melee, he gets more leadership and 10% damage resistance. That's excellent. He will crumble less and take less damage. It's just good. More vampires. On him, you do want the Sword of Antiheroes. It's only 99 gold, 25% uh, damage increase on a lord that's already going to get a bunch of damage increase can be quite nice. And the Helm of Discord is amazing. Take it. AoE, minus 24 melee attack, minus 24 melee defense. It is great. Though he is an expensive boy, so he is your carry. As with, I guess, most vampire counts, their lords they're carrying. Vlad, the Footlord. He has no mount options. He is, he is the Footlord. Don't want the hunger for a different reason than all the other lords, because you might be like, human boy, you piece of shit, you dumb motherfucker. He's actually going to be in melee for a long time. He could use the hunger. Yes. But, no, shut up. Uh, Arcane Conduit's good. Master Grimot's excellent. His spells, Lord of Vampires, take what you want. Von Karstein Ring is also great. 60% damage resistance, duration 22 seconds. Uh, super good. It's kind of expensive, but it's good. And then we have the Blood Drinker. So, you could have the Hunger. Boohoo. Disabled if leadership is broken. Restores 4 hit points a second for almost 100 gold. Or you could have Constant, even if your leadership is, is negative. So, even if you're crumbling, this is active. It restores twice as much. And it costs... Eh? A little less than twice as much. So, it's less than twice as much gold. Restores twice as much. And doesn't rely on leadership. But human boy, you're still being a dumbass, and I hate you. Why don't you just take both? Because in literally every game, Vlad's going to heal cap. So it doesn't matter. Like He's always going to heal cap, so might as well just take one. Because for the last half of the game, when he's heal capped, you know, neither of these is going to be doing anything. So it saves you some money. Shrink of Vampire Lord is my, per my personal favorite. Again, I almost always take him on his Terror Geist. But... Unlike his dumb fuck cousin, uh, his abilities don't suck. 25% armor piercing on bloodlust. Okay, that's cool. Why don't I just get 50% armor piercing on the claws of Morcane? And then I also get the Ghoul King of Ashoran, which heals me instead of spending Winds of Magic on myself through Invocations of the Heck. It heals me for a butt ton. Hmm, why don't I just do that? He has the same mixed lore as his brother. He has the Opal Amulet, which is good, but then he has Power Stone, which is better than, I believe, Potion of Strength. Yeah. Um, so, Stricter Vampire Lord is just better, in my opinion. Now, he is more expensive, so that is something to take in mind. Let's let's pretend full kit. 3,600. Other guy, full kit. 3,150. So, you could take this guy if you needed to save 400 gold, but I would personally just take a better lord. Manfred! Probably want him on his Dragon or on his Bartered Nightmare. Uh, you want Master of the Bar Black Arts. It is kind of like Arcane Conduit, but his special version of it for some reason. Um, he has two Lords of Magic, so remember that when you're taking him that you have to get rid of a bunch of spells, otherwise he's way too expensive. And Sword of Unholy Power. It only works while engaged in melee. So it is good, you just have to know who you're fighting. So if you're fighting, like, Chaos... Manfred doesn't want to be in melee that whole time. Because there's not that many units that Chaos is going to bring that you can sit in forever. But if you're fighting a Vampire Count's Mirror, there's going to be zombies. You can find some zombies and sit in them. So it's like, know what you're fighting. But that one takes sometimes. Heroes! White Kings are super good. Usually you just want to take them on horse. Sometimes you'll take them on... I mean, sorry. Usually you want to take them on foot. Sometimes you take them on horse. Like in the Empire matchup, per se. Um... I haven't noticed a lot of people taking 
the barded skeletal seed over the skeletal seed. 20 armor isn't that big of a deal. Because um, it's, it's so much armor that non-armor piercing won't do much to you. But armor piercing you'll ignore it anyway, so the difference isn't that big. And the 6 speed is nice, saving 50 gold is nice. Foe Seeker I would cut, Hero Killing Blow I would cut, and I would definitely take Scab's Grave, not Potion of Strength. Yeah. Uh, Scab's Grave is super good. If you haven't used it, it's basically the Skaven Scorch spell, but really good. No cast time, just deletes unarmored infantry. It does magic and fire damage. Uh, why you don't take these buffs is these guys do have a high weapon strength. Their arm piercing is eh, okay. Um, but the main thing is their melee attack stats are pretty bad. So they can't hit heroes or lords reliably. And I uh, usually just want them cheap, kind of like the same as Bretonia's Paladins. Um, Banshee! Banshees are tough nowadays because magic damage is super prevalent, but if you decide to take one, I would probably take Slippery. It's only 80 gold. It's good, and you need them to get that melee defense up. I would take the Screaming Banner. Minus 4 leadership is nice. They're usually kind of sticky units. I wouldn't take Potion of Strength. Um, you won't want a way to heal them because they only have 2,300 health, though they do have 75% physical resist, so... Necromancers! Usually you'll take them either on a corpse cart or on the corpse cart of Unholy Lodestone. I personally prefer the Unholy Lodestone. Keep Master of the Dead, cut the other thing. Because they're going to be your secondary caster of anything, so there's no way they're going to use this enough times to make it worth it. Um, usually you just take them with a the zombie summon in case your lord dies. Obviously don't have your lord also have a zombie summon. Otherwise that's bad. Forbidden Rod is great. This is part of the reason I say take the Unholy Lodestone. Oops and the Master of the Dead, uh, so you can heal yourself up, because when you use this, it'll give you a whole bunch of Winds of Magic, but it also hurts you. Um, scroll Shielding is good if your Micro is good enough to use it on your Lord when they're in trouble. Vampire Shadows and Death will cover at the same time, because it's just a different lore of magic. Probably either want them on their Bartered Nor Nightmare or their Hellsteed. Hellsteed if you want to win the air fight, Bartered Nightmare if you want to get around. On foot, they're really underwhelming. I would cut Dark Benediction. It's 100 wins of magic for, I mean, sorry, 100 gold for uh, some leadership on a roster that doesn't break. I would cut the Hunger because, one, don't want them in melee for that long, and also they have a Mortal Will. Mortal Will is great. Take it. 60 gold, free healing. You know, just don't waste invocations on them. Spells, do what you want, and I wouldn't take the sort of anti heroes on them personally. But you could. This sucks. Don't take it. That's Vampire Counts. We'll be back with Wood Elves and Warriors of Chaos and whatnot.